Amazing video as always. What's going on, everybody? So, got a couple PRs in GitHub that I was going to poke around with. And then I was messing with one of them. And they seem to do a lot better. So, I'm going to mess with that. And then I'm going to check out. There's still a couple more in there that I was going to poke through. So. <laughs> so for some reason this one I'm not really sure exactly why uh, this one does not cause a drop so I'm curious to see what happens when uh, when it does someone says there's no sound uh, this one doesn't liar I hear the sound so I'm curious to see what happens when uh, don't lie to me <laughs> I definitely have sound if you don't have sound um, I'm not sure what to tell you So first I'm just going to see, the camera should turn on, so I just want to see if it's to the right camera. As the table's not plugged in, I, I guess the arm's plugged in, I didn't remember leaving that plugged in. Yeah, okay. So, let me just exit this one. Yeah, so this is this puck filtering one. And and then I just kind of merged the code to it. I only made it, like I, I basically made the striking and all that, like all it was doing was filtering for the puck. Um, but then also, probably the only thing I added to that logic was, um, well, first of all, I'm bringing in the rescale factor. That way I can just modify the rescale factor. We're not working with straight pixel values so like this was checking to see if the radius of the circular object that it finds is great at least in the code was greater than 10 but we didn't have a uh, it needed to be less than some sort of number right because the puck doesn't change in size so so I went ahead and added a radius less than 2 and then I just did the rescale factor so so I should be able to come in here and rather than maybe half screen we should be able to say hey I want the full 1280 by 720 resolution. What do I do other than coding? Um, mostly car stuff. So I like working on cars and taking cars to the track, that kind of stuff. Now I don't even see the screen. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So now we can make the screen, you know, full size, at least for the camera, um, and it still works. But let me turn the air hockey table on. And let's see if this arm still freezes when two cameras are on. Not jazz yet. I mean, I didn't figure it out in the other one, but at least this one doesn't seem to be freezing. So, like, this is some PR code. And I just want to see if with on both, like, because I was thinking it was probably a USB bandwidth thing that was just kind of locking things up. Um, but anyways, let me just move the puck real quick. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So anyway, the the PR code that oh, and we got the autofocus on. I need to fix that too. Anyway, now at least it doesn't lag when it strikes. If we could just keep the puck from getting stuck, that'd be great. <laughs> could you make the color of the circle as pink or yellow? I'm not sure what circle you're talking about. Yeah, there have been a few improvements. Um, I was just telling them that this the puck detection is from a pull request that I got yesterday, and then I made some modifications to it. Uh, it's 
<laughs> Let me move this. If anybody has some suggestions on how we stop it from getting stuck in the corners like that, that's pretty annoying. Um, I'm thinking of just putting something in the way there. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Please explain the project for people who don't know. Um, I mean, I feel like it's pretty obvious, but uh, it's a robotic arm playing air hockey. Um, that's about it. Yeah, this is open CV for recognizing things. Yeah, so anyway, yeah, this one's, oh my, much better now the puck just gets stuck. But anyway, yeah, this one's uh, a whole lot better. And honestly, the logic for tracking the puck and hitting the puck, or I guess for the arm to track the puck and hit the puck, is no different than what we were doing yesterday. It's just slightly different code for actually tracking the image of the puck. Which seems to have made all the difference, and I... I cannot, for the life of me, figure out why yesterday's code was freezing and today's code doesn't freeze. And honestly, actually, I was working with this yesterday, so I'm not really, like, a computer restart wouldn't be the answer either. Now we just need to figure out some way to stop it from getting stuck. Should use, I would like to use, I wanted them to send me two arms so I could have an arm on both sides, but um, they, they haven't sent me a second one yet. If anybody wants to send me a second arm, have have at it. A sweeper arm that drags the puck back. <laughs> it just starts to get really, really expensive in terms of how many arms we're going to be using. <laughs> so if I keep moving the arm back, I've tried doing that. Um, doesn't really seem like the. I don't know. The the arm starts getting really messed up if you keep if I keep moving it back. I thought about that, and I don't see why. When I watch the video and watch it play, it would make a big deal. But uh, will you release source code? Uh, yeah, the source code is already well. Actually, so the code that I'm running right now uh, is a modified version of the PR request. So in fact, I can push that right now though, um, just in case someone wants to modify it further. So I took the PR, because the PR request was, or PR request, the PR was, sorry guys, I just woke up, so haven't had all my coffee yet, give me a moment. Um, the PR was basically just to run on the video that I posted, so it didn't actually know much about striking and all that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, yeah, let me, uh, let me modify the, fix this puck too. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm just really enjoying this puck getting stuck every five seconds. At least it's not the arm getting stuck. That was way more, way more annoying. So I think the one I was using yesterday was the air hockey stream code. So I think I'm just going to copy and replace that code. All right, the code that's being run right now uh, there it is. Let me fix this puck now. So at this point, um, can the arm lose in this game? Absolutely. <laughs> it's definitely losing a lot. Cheaper alternative to the arm for 200 bucks. I mean, you could try to build something, and it, you could probably build an arm that's better at like this whatever the specific task you're trying to do. The problem is just having all the degrees of motion and stuff. 
like if you just need the bot like for example for air hockey there's really no need for the arm to be able to go like up and down and hold the same x and y position as it goes up and down so if you were just trying to play air hockey with it you really just need x and y coordinates or something so it's a lot less complicated if you do that i think you would just need to find the right uh You'd probably end up building your own, is my guess. I'm not really sure there's a air hockey robot. Anyway, um, aside from whatever it's doing right now, uh, it's not freezing anymore. So if anybody can figure out why, why this code doesn't freeze and why the code from yesterday freezes, I would love to know. <laughs> why isn't the arm reaching the corner? Well... You can't see it right now, but the arm is significantly rotated. Um, so for some reason, so another issue the arm has is it like lowers itself and it keeps going lower and lower or higher and higher. So for some reason, the Z coordinates are getting changed. Um, so I tried to remedy that by basically like every time it makes a strike, I raise it. Where is the strike? Here we go. Here I'm lowering the arm. Um, that's probably too much because now the arm's like literally lifting itself off of the box and pivoting off the box. I think it's actually trying to escape. That's that's my guess. Let me just change that to something better. What prescription are my glasses? Um, I honestly forget. I buy them online though, so <laughs> I have to fill it in a lot. Couldn't I can't I can't remember off the top of my head. I don't know if it's written on the glasses. Sometimes it is, but these are just like online glasses. Sorry, can't tell you. I know that's a really important question. Yeah, the arm is just currently lifting itself basically off this box. Let's see if we can reset it. <laughs> it really is. What prescription do you think my eyes are? I think it's three and a half and four, you know, negative three and a half and negative four, something like that. I think that's right, but I could be totally wrong. Does the arm have sensors? Um, yeah, the arm, I mean, it has some sensors. So like the suction cup, for example, like senses when it's actually like grab something, the gripper knows when it's actually grabbed something. But other than that, it doesn't have like distance sensors you can attach distance sensors or you can attach a camera and all that stuff but other than that no <laughs> negative seven yeah i pretty much <clears throat> i think i i just destroyed my eyes as a kid i uh i really enjoyed staring at flashlights when i was like a really young kid like three years old, if I could find myself a flashlight, I would stare at it and then pull away the flashlight and think it was cool that I couldn't see. And then I needed glasses. <laughs> Working at the computer has had no effect on my eyesight. It was really just staring at flashlights. It seems to, <laughs> seems to do the trick. Mm, nothing just let go of that puck so fast. Have you considered doing this on Twitch? So with Twitch, I mean, like, obviously there's, wow, did it just, <laughs> I really want to try, I just wanted to see if this would play long enough with this new, new drop, but it's just so, it just keeps kicking it off. Uh, why should I stream it on Twitch? You can be pretty confident I'll never put something on Udemy. I'm not a fan of Udemy.
Oh, Monopoly. That would be crazy. <laughs> so at the end, the, the bots can just get super frustrated with each other and, and fight. Monopoly would be interesting. Arguments with the computer. And the computer probably won't steal from the bank. But we could code that in, I guess. He's free to not doing Udemy. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but no, I honestly don't see the point in Udemy. I think if I <clears throat> if I track how much money I've been able to make <clears throat> by doing like free tutorials, I think at any step of the way you could sell out and go to Udemy and make a good ch chunk of change. But as soon as you start putting things on Udemy, you're like you're not going to grow. So like if I had started putting tutorials on Udemy. You've got, a, you've got a paywall that stops any growth that's going to occur. Why not make free tutorials? Everybody gets access to it for free. And because they're free, uh, the network can grow so much quicker from people that are able to access your course. It just makes so much more sense to make it free. I mean, you'll, <clears throat> you make enough money on ads. And then besides ads, you can do like contracting consulting, which is what I do. Or you can take like uh, sponsors or stuff like that. And I just think the growth of having something totally free is just as good, if not better, than the money that you would make from Udemy, like let's say stretched over the course of one year, two years, or something like that. And then the added benefit that everybody gets by having access to the content without having to pay anything is just cherry on top. Do I live alone? No, I'm married. How old is Python programming in that? I don't know, four or five years? I'm, I'm not really sure. <clears throat> so I came up with the idea um, for the doing air hockey because I was watching their, like the UARM, UARM has like a Kickstarter, I can't remember if it's Kickstarter or Indiegogo. Do I have any course I need to? No, I don't have any courses on Udemy. Um, there's one from like a, a company that I did like white labeled basically. So there's no like face cam or anything like that. No mention of Centex. And it's different from the content that I have on YouTube. But if you see anything that matches any of the content on YouTube, that's not mine. Well, it's mine, but I didn't put it up there. No, I don't do, I mean, I do a lot of contracting consulting and finance with Python, but uh, aside from trading Bitcoin automated, I don't trade any like stocks or anything like that automatic. No, so I don't have anything uh, on Flask on Udemy. If, if there's one up there, that's not mine. It's fraud. Which IDE? I'm pretty sure it says, I mean, you can read it right, right up here, sublime text. Okay, I'm gonna try, so another one of these, one is from 21 hours ago, update to the stream code. I'm not really sure what the update was. Might help the lag. When did you party last time? Uh, it depends what your definition of a party is. I think probably my definition is different than yours. Have you heard of Atom? Yeah, I've, I use the Atom editor. Um, it's like the, I think Atom is the default on paper space. That was pretty fun. I'm really not. If I if I drink, I just get super chill, and I can't hear things. Like if I'm in like a loud environment, I just I just 
zone out basically. <laughs> so, so if I get drunk, I just sit and kind of just chill on a couch somewhere. That's about it. I might talk to like one person or something or go to sleep. Yeah, TensorFlow.js is interesting. I, I keep looking into TensorFlow.js hoping to... I've got an idea of what I'd like to do with it. The, the, the real bummer with Tensor... Like, the, the demos are super cool, and you can do, um, like, object detection, and, and you can do some cool stuff with it, but it's really... Fr like, if you do the demos on your computer, then go do your demo on, like, your cell phone. And it's really frustrating. <laughs> so, so it works really well on computers now, but it's almost like uh, with TensorFlow.js, it's like this technology that's here now, but we're still waiting on the hardware to catch up, uh, which is kind of annoying, but it's, it's super cool and I want to play with it. But I wish I could come up with something that would work on like both a cell phone, uh, like an average cell phone, and, um, and a computer. What are the companies offered full-time job after starting this YouTube channel? I don't think I've ever, I mean, so Facebook reached out, Uber has reached out. I'm trying to think of any other big companies that you would know of. I, there's definitely quite a few companies have reached out, but I'm just not really that interested in picking up another job. Like, why would I do that? <laughs> Like most of those jobs don't offer the same amount of money I make just by doing free tutorials. So why would I leave? And then also you got to live in California where cost of living, like you're going to, you're, you're going to pay like $60,000 a year just to survive. Doesn't seem to make much sense. I'm trying to pull up the code for the uh, the chain. Oh, okay, so this one was just to do a buffer size. So I did I did actually try that, and that didn't really that didn't help any of the the actual freezing. And you have to listen to your boss. I mean, if I if I respected a boss, I I think that would be fine. You just have to I think you just you just have to find a good boss, and that's probably the one thing that actually probably exists at like top end type companies is you probably actually have decent bosses that you can respect, but yeah, that's, that's what you need. And like, you know, doing stuff on your own, you can, so, you know, you want to go fast, you go alone, you want to go far, you go with a team, but it's really difficult to find a good team. So I'm actually, I'm not even going to bother with this one. This one was just for the buffer size. Um, and I did try that. I, I can't remember if it helped the frame rate at all, but, uh, but they didn't solve the lag. It was actually this code here that solved the freezing. It hasn't frozen yet, so that's really exciting. Glad we got that solved. That was annoying. Although I don't even know, um, I don't even know what was the solution there. How to become Centex in Python and machine learning stuff? Uh, well, thank you for the uh, the super chat and. So I think probably the biggest thing is just like, just I would just do pretty much like exactly what I've been doing. So I think a lot of people m might get stuck like with anything like reading books or like learning the content rather than actually doing the content. So at least for me, I've I've gotten a lot of success out of uh, actually like when I act, when I learn something, I go and teach it, and the act of actually teaching it. Uh, I mean, just pay, pays huge dividends because you, you immediately find out what you don't fully understand. Like you'll be writing it out and you'll write out some parameter or something. And if you're teaching somebody or you're, you're just even if you're filming a tutorial or you're just doing a text-based write-up on your blog or whatever, you're going to realize, oh, I don't really know what this is, <laughs> you know. And you can take the easy route and just kind of skip over it and gloss over it. Or you can go back and figure out what that thing is or how that works or whatever. Um, and that, that really helps. Um, so at least for me, someone else asked about books. I don't know where that went. I get asked for programming books all the time. I have not read a single programming book besides 
the programming book I helped rewrite. Basically, I updated a programming book for I think it was A Press for Pi Game. And other than that, I mean, the the problem with books is they're always going to be like outdated, and the publisher is going to always want to have three, four hundred pages. So, so it's just going to be like stretched out as far as it can go. And then also, just the whole writing process takes. A significant amount of time so at least a year so people probably the biggest one right now just because machine learning is so popular people are like what are machine learning books well none of them because by the time that book you know someone writes that book gets it to publish and now it's out and then finally gets some like people reading it and reviewing it it's probably like two years old <laughs> or something <laughs> and the field is changing too much I mean I just don't see the point especially when you can find all the information to anything you want online so and that's that's how I've learned everything like I don't have a degree in this I don't none of that like I didn't read any books you can just google all your questions and that's it <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what I think by the time the book's written it's already outdated and it's just made to be as long as possible and I just I find books super tedious plus with programming like i want to work with the book and like you you can program alongside like reading a book sure i just i'm way more efficient on the computer so i it might just be i'm different like that's totally fine like if you find yourself uh if you have good results i guess from reading books i mean come keep doing it it's just i have no suggestion for you YouTube handles currency conversion on the fly. Does it? Why do you think that handled it? Is it the uh, is it the message that pops up? At least in Super Chat, I don't see a conversion on the fly. I don't know if Streamlabs is doing it. No. I'd love to know <laughs> what the conversion is. Also, I can't read that message. I have no idea what that said. I'm going to have to translate that. Usually you can just right click and translate. Why can't I do that? Move this over here just in case. New Boston and you have the same voice. What's going on? I consumed him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <coughs> Teach the hand to move the puck out of the corner. Yeah, it's been sitting there for a while, hasn't it? I'm not really sure. Oh, someone else. Trans you guys need to translate it quicker for me. Um... So anyways, he wants, yeah, I don't know how to get the puck to be moved out of the corner. One option I thought is if if it, we at least know it's in the corner. And so like you'll notice like in the code yesterday, <clears throat> I had it, um, if it was in this position the whole time, it would have kept trying to strike the puck because it was greater than 0.8. And so instead what I did is uh, change it so if the puck is also, it needs to be less than 0.94. Because if it's more than 0.94, like 0.96, you know it's beyond the arm. It's like over here. Now, how to get it from that point, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. You could maybe have some sort of process that like takes the arm in front of it and then just drops down. But I, every time I've tried messing with that, it the, the puck, just he just loses the puck. And so that's hard. <laughs> Lift it up and bling it out. <laughs> yeah, I wish. So, <clears throat> actually, what I was thinking is putting something in the corner to block it. That's that's how I tend to think, is just drop something in there. Dude, play Fortnite. <laughs> I'm not sure people would appreciate it. A small fan that turned... That actually probably could work if you put, like, little PC fans in the corner and then move the move the arm out of the way and then the fans turn on and move, move the puck. It could be done. It could be done. <clears throat> Can it grab a coffee cup? I think the coffee cup might be too heavy, actually. I don't think it would work. First day at work tomorrow as a data scientist. Congratulations on the job, at least. And uh, good luck. I hope you didn't lie on your 
application or anything. Otherwise, I'm sure you'll be fine. What's going on, Scott? So while that's stuck, I'm just going to go over to this one. <coughs> So it has so this improves puck tracking and adds the automatic field detection. Let me open this and check this video over here first. Okay. Seems legit. So I guess edge detection or something like that's being used. So then we wouldn't have to keep changing it. <clears throat> Can't the arm move up? Yeah, the arm can move up. What would you like to do with the arm moving up? Is it true that coffee in America is very light? Um, I don't think so. I mean, you, coffee in America is like infinite choices. <laughs> so you can get anything you want following random links. Well, I mean, it was a submission and a pull request on GitHub. Seems safe enough. So this is reading in from the, oh, did he change, I guess he changed the code for me already. All right. I appreciate that. I thought I was going to have to swap the code to uh, work with the camera feed rather than the video. I hope after a year it'll be really good at air hockey if that's the case. If it's still playing air hockey a year later. <clears throat> oh, this is... I didn't copy it over. <laughs> I was like, this looks really familiar from before. A Roomba bot play air hockey? I don't think you'd want to make a Roomba bot play air hockey. <laughs> I do have a Roomba, though. I used to have a thing called Bob Sweep, which is pretty nice. But uh, it would, like, like a Roomba, as it approaches a wall, like, slows down. And a lot of times doesn't have to even touch the wall. But the Roomba, the Roomba goes like this. Wall! And then it backs up. Sorry for the headphone users. <laughs> but then, but, but the, I'm sorry, the bob sweep smashes into the wall. And then, after it's been, say, I don't know, a year or something, the little front sensors go bad, and then the bob sweep just, like, goes in a circle. If it didn't slam into walls, that wouldn't be a problem. You know what I really want to try, those? Like, one of those little yard mowing bots. I would like one of those. Oh my gosh. This has been modified from the pump. <laughs> oh, we got to change it to use the gripper. I'm just going to do this. I just want to see it detect. So we don't need to set pump true. Expected radius not defined. I feel like expected radius shouldn't be a, a parameter at all. It should just be a diameter divided by two. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Challenge accepted. I'll make Roomba bot. I 
So I think what I'm going to do is let me just fix this real quick. So expected diameter, anytime we have expected radius, I feel like you should just be able to replace that with diameter divided by 2. I'm not really sure why you'd, why you'd even have an expected radius. If radius, hey, right here. Wow, you're really giving me a hard time, aren't you? <coughs> So what if we just replace expected radius with uh, expected diameter divided by 2? Replace all. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That's detecting a lot of the green. It could be the, uh, in his defense, that could be the... Uh, Ooh, and it's super laggy. It could be the uh, the camera settings. So I could change the camera settings and that might help. Have you ever thought of trying hard coding in Python what you are doing now? I'm not sure exactly what you are calling hard coding in this case, but... Uh, like, I don't know if you mean actually just writing everything from scratch or hard coding as in no variables. <laughs> so at least in this case, man, there's a lot of freezing. Yeah, every time the arm moves, this is getting frozen. I think I'm going to... And it's, whew. This, has, this is appearing to have the same problem as the original. Be gone. I do like the automatic ROI though, actually. Let me see how, how he was doing that. Because we could probably add that in, but the problem is you'd only really want to do that once. If table is found, use it. Otherwise, ask the user to select. <clears throat> so we could add that in. Could maybe take that. <laughs> yeah, writing everything from scratch. It wouldn't work. <laughs> There's no way I could do like image processing. I mean, it would, it would just take me a long time for sure, if even possible. Um, it would just be super slow, like getting a good frame rate, writing it from scratch in Python. Like I bet a lot of OpenCV just isn't Python. It's probably C. C++. I'll probably, I'll probably take this automatic ROI though. I like I like the idea of that. So maybe I'll borrow that. Mm, but we have to take this contours code too, I guess. How much do you code every day? I don't know. I'd probably average 10 to 12 hours. <laughs> it's a lot of time that I spend. I don't know though, because a lot of times on the weekends I don't, I don't know, to be honest. Especially if you factor in like eating and doing other things. Watching YouTube. Doing nothing. How do you not get burnt out? You enjoy doing whatever it is that you're doing. I just work on fun projects. Like I definitely get burnt out, like doing like contracting or consulting stuff. Um, 
Yeah, that's a recipe for getting burnt out for sure. <clears throat> but if it's like your thing or something that you're really interested in, that's how you don't get burnt out. So I think I'm probably going to incorporate this, but I'm going to skip that for now. And I'm going to come back to here. And probably the like a change I wouldn't mind making <clears throat> is as the puck is coming in like diagonally, a lot of times we miss the puck by uh, just going straight forward. And it, it would make so much more sense to, to try to hit the puck towards wherever the puck is coming from. Like that just makes a lot more sense. <laughs> we don't have the thing. <laughs> So like when the puck, if the puck was like right here, striking perfectly forward works. But let's say the arm is here and the puck is like here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, again. You don't want to strike forward. You want to strike like towards the puck. So we could try to take like the puck's location and then take the arm and strike towards the puck or something like that. And that would probably help a lot. Especially when the development... <clears throat> Yeah, definitely. Like it, at the beginning, Scott, it's things are just like way more exciting. And then as time goes on and you've got to like fine tune the code and all that kind of stuff, like definitely gets a little more tedious. But then you just like walk away. <laughs> if, again, if it's your own project, like at any point, if you're getting bored or tired or stuck or whatever, you just walk away or just go do something else. A lot of times I'll go for a run or go work out or something like that and like or just go to sleep that helps <laughs> so let me take so we take the puck x um probably what we ought to do before we take like actually strike at the puck would be we would want to pick so the puck x yeah the puck y is uh should be a percentage. So let me move this. Do this. Uh, print puck y. And then don't we? I, I thought we had to get position for the arm. I don't think we actually do. That's going to be another command that could probably cause trouble, but we'll see. I feel like I answered, are you married? Like, 10 minutes ago at least. Married to Python? No, I'm actually married. <laughs> so I think <clears throat> I forget the order, but we should we can we should be able to get away with swift dot get position. And I forget the order of that, but uh we could probably determine it soon. Do I, have to, do I have children? No. Maybe one day. Little Centex Juniors running around. Did I not print our, oh, it's only as it goes to do a strike. I see, okay, okay, hold up, let me close this. Here we go. So X, Y, and your Z. So let's try arm y equals, oh, we're not going to get away with that, I don't think. <laughs> Why do you use Windows? Uh, Windows is just a user, m more user friendly. I, I agree that Linux is more developer friendly. And then Mac OS uh, is probably a, a great, in between, I just simply do not use it. So, uh, probably the biggest thing with any Apple product is you just can't, you can't build it without like, you, well, one, you just can't build it. But uh, like, 
like with a like for me I can build a really high end Windows machine for you know probably fifteen hundred bucks or something like that. And if I really like if I wanted to load it on with like with GPUs or whatever and have like a really nice deep learning machine, still like twenty five hundred dollars or something like that. Although now with the freaking ten eighty TIs and all that it's a little more expensive since people bought it out. But <clears throat> I think if if you don't build your own machines, then sure, max a a good slightly overpriced product. But if you're used to being able to get hardware and just build it yourself, what you know, Mac is really hard to justify, unless you're getting like a, a laptop or something like that. But even now, you can start building laptops. And eh. I think that's the problem. I, I don't I don't understand like why Mac has to be so expensive. <laughs> but whatever. I know people that have Macs and especially like the laptops or even like the desktop PCs and stuff and um, they have nothing but good things to say about them, so, except for the price. So I guess that justifies the price maybe. Maybe. So Puck Y. I'm trying to think of how I want to do getting the, the negatives and stuff like that. So I think we'll... Probably the way I would do it is, or for arm Y, how do you use a GPU for machine learning? <laughs> CUDA. Someone else's code. <laughs> I'm not sure what what your question is there, decoder. How how you use a GPU? Uh, you install TensorFlow GPU. You use Mac and Windows. Like, what would you use? Why do you use Mac or, like, why would you use one over the other? <laughs> How don't you use a GPU for it? Well, that's the question. You don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Don't use a GPU. Unless you want to do like the uh, samples or something like that, you can get by with a CPU. Or if you're just running a model, you can run it on the CPU, like our chatbot runs on a CPU. I just, you know, if you're just doing one thing at a time, not, not too bad. But yeah, if you're trying to train in like batches of 100 samples or something like that, it starts getting really, really slow. It can be done though. I just wouldn't, I wouldn't wish it upon my enemies. Favorite piece of hardware? 1080 Ti. At least at its uh, fair market value, <laughs> or it's a MSRP. Uh, it was a, it was like the best priced GPU you could possibly get by far. Honestly, it was probably underpriced. I don't know if they set that price specifically because they just wanted to move units or what. But I mean, it just seemed like it was just crazily priced for the amount of power you would get. So, yeah, that was. That was the best, but now I think they're like eleven $1 hundred or twelve hundred dollars for a ten eighty Ti, which is, you know, a little overpriced probably for what you're getting. But yeah, Jarvis like AI. I think as close as I would get to a Jarvis would be like a more like an Alexa AI <laughs> than Jarvis. I'm not sure what I would get Jarvis to do for me. Are you a freelancer? I mean, I guess by the definition of freelancer, I'd call it contracting and consulting. But yeah, I do do that. I, I try to keep that to a minimum, though. I don't really... I'd rather be doing my own thing than someone else's. Now, as I was doing. So I think what I'll do is I'll plus. So I'll kind of do the same thing that I did to get... Um, I thought I made that, like, I thought I've made this calculation before. I guess it was just here. So it's not quite the same. So I'm pretty sure to get the arms percentage location, because it's in the negatives, we want to do plus this. So we get the number plus arm y max and we would want to divide that 
But then we're going to have to translate it back out to... I don't know if I really want to do that. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's just try that. Divided by arm y max times 2. So that should normalize both the puck y and the arm y. Let me just print those out real quick. Puck y, arm y. And we'll see. Yeah, Fred. Um, honestly, Python programming at net. <clears throat> so often I just go back to my own website and <laughs> get reminded about some topic or whatever. Or I just Google it. Like a lot of times if I can remember, oh, I found the answer to this on Stack Overflow. I like remember the question I typed in <laughs> and I get my answer that way. What's my streaming schedule? Definitely random. And one of the things that was holding me off from doing uh, streaming was just the fact that it seems like most people with streams, like it, become, it has to be scheduled. And with YouTube, I've never really had to run a schedule. Um, so yeah, just whenever I feel like it, I'll probably pop up a stream. 411k subs, 275 viewers. I think that's not too bad actually in concurrent, uh, concurrent views. The worst number is like 411,000 subs and then on any, let's say any video would be, it's like 5,000 or 7,000 or something is the average views at the moment. Where is everybody? It's just different when like probably no matter what I release besides maybe ML, pretty much uh, ML is something that most people are excited about, but you know, think of how many subs I have and then how many of those people are interested in, let's say, a robot arm. Uh, it's probably like less than 10% or something like that. So it's, I think that's probably what causes stuff like that. Same thing with like, uh, like web development, stuff like that. Like people aren't necessarily always interested in no matter what it is that I post, unless it's super generalized. Favorite language apart from Python? No, none. <laughs> none of the above. <laughs> I, I found Go to be uh, decent. Actually, I guess favorite language, probably JavaScript, to be honest. I mean, just because you can, you can do such cool things in JavaScript, but I'm so bad at JavaScript that I feel uh, like a liar if I say JavaScript, but JavaScript. Just because of what you can do with it. It's just a cool language. Panda Nan. IBM's released a simulated... What do you mean a simulated quantum computing library? Like, so it's like in preparation for quantum computing or what? Cool things like what? Like, like interactive applications, stuff like that. Like... Like we were talking yesterday about desktop apps versus like to me like I'm not sure I'm ever going to build another desktop app again because wh like what's the point unless a client asks for one. Whereas with because like with JavaScript you can do anything you want and just make it a web app. So I, I guess I just think of JavaScript as my app making language as opposed to like Python. I just don't like making apps in Python like desktop apps anyways. Do you think we should learn? I mean, if you're interested in coding in junior high, but like in junior high, I, I did not like programming. Like I tried to learn programming when I was in like junior high and high school and I just didn't like it. It was just not, it just never clicked. I don't think I ever tried Python though. I think that's, that's the problem right there. Why in high school? Or I don't know. I, don't, I think... I think people just teach whatever it is they learned first. So if your teacher learned C++ first or whatever, they think everybody should learn C++ first. And it's just the, uh, the tragedy of standardized education, to be honest. Some people are probably better off learning C++ first, and then some people are Python. I think people are going to be insulted, but a lot of times, like I remember there was a question on Stack Overflow, like is anybody ever really an expert in Python or something like that? I think I... 
or not Stack Overflow. I think it was in Reddit. And I think that you've got like programmers and you've got like power users of a programming language. And I like to think of myself more as like a power user of a programming language rather than like a really good programmer. But people that start with something lower level like C++ or whatever um, tend to become better, tend to be better programmers, I guess, if they were able to pick up C++ um, or some other lower level language, that is. Whereas someone like me with Python, like, I just get good at using Python to do what I want it to do. Like, I don't really think of myself as, like, a really good programmer. Like, I can just take the tools I have and use them to do the things that I want to do. But I don't really think I'm a good programmer or an expert programmer. So we don't need this print puck Y anymore. A lot of students struggle with the curly braces. I hear that. I mean, I think Python's easy for, like to me, it still seems like, if you're gonna introduce people, ooh, almost knocked over that water. If you're gonna, that's why I have cups with lids on them, always. Because <laughs> otherwise I'd knock them down. Anyway, I think for introducing people to programming, it does seem like really rough to introduce people to, to C++ over Python, like why not Python? Uh, it just seems to be a better choice in my in my opinion, but I think if somebody wants to get like a CS degree or I don't even know if I would call it CS anymore, but like a programming degree, I think I think you, you kind of should know lower level languages because Python's not low, low level enough for you to have for sure a full understanding. Like I got away with Python not even understanding object oriented programming for a pretty long time. Like I got a lot of stuff done. Um, but I think if you're going to be like a, a real programmer, you need to, you need to know not just object oriented programming, but like a whole lot more than that, like pointers and that kind of stuff, memory management, all that kind of, do you use meta classes? No, I would probably use code that uses meta classes. <laughs> That's about it. Too many use scratch. I think I could agree with that. Um, I think at some point you get like too low level. Whereas like with Python, Python's like, I feel like, I don't know though. Like I'd have to go back to my six year old self or 10 year old self and try to read Python and see if I could actually follow it. But I, I feel like this is the reason I, I really enjoyed Python was just how easily you could just, you could not be a programmer and read a Python script and know exactly what was going on. Uh, whereas uh, like I tried to learn Java for example, and I, always needed like the editor what was it eclipse basically i you could like get eclipse to fix your mistakes and like i could never figure out how to make i couldn't write there's no way i could write a job as a program without eclipse to like fix all my mistakes for me <laughs> and i don't really like the idea of that i always start off kids on scratch have you tried uh starting people off scott on uh on python or no and like how old are the kids Like, I wonder too, you know, I think, I think, because it, it might be like the case is like people get older, they, they develop like different reasoning in their head and like something like where like block programming, um, something like scratch where it, it might just be a thing where you've, you've got to be, you have to be of a certain age. And that like, it just might be like the whole like white space tab and code blocks, all that kind of stuff. Maybe that's, I don't know. I don't know enough about childhood development to, <laughs> to really answer that, but that might like stuff like that could be a hurdle for, a for, for younger children to like pick up Python. Maybe I'm not really sure though. I feel like most STEM companies start around 14. Yeah, I feel like at age 14, you, you, you should be able to start at Python, but eight for Python. Is my wife? No, my wife's a doctor. She, she def. I think she, the most programming she did was HTML. <laughs> I 
What's my opinion about functional programming or functional paradigm on the rise? Well, whatever gets the job done. I mean, I don't, I don't really care. I don't care what IDE people use. I don't really care what language people use. At the end of the day, we're just trying to make products that do things and hopefully do them as fast as possible, as smoothly as possible. And then with if other people are using it, you need it to be as securely as possible. If they're out of the womb, they're in the terminal. Uh, yeah. Okay, so somebody needs to provide some code. <clears throat> now that we have the puck Y and the arm Y. Because <sighs> the puck's traveling. So it's almost like you'd want to take like the middle point. But we need to convert these to actual coordinates to send to the Y. Although part of me thinks that as long as we travel, like we could just take the puck. Like what if I... I wonder if I just pass. We pr we might not have even needed to calculate the arm Y. Like, why don't we just send it to the wherever the puck is? <laughs> oh, this is a new question. Why don't you use Linux? <laughs> uh. You play Clash of Clans. No, nope, don't play Clash of Clans. I play. Uh, let's see. I like. I have a. I like the uh, the Oculus Rift. So there, I play Elite Dangerous. Or uh, there's a couple other games on there that are like straight up uh, VR games or like racing games. Um, old school RuneScape. Do you know a channel named Coding Train? Uh, no, I don't know coding train tensorflow.js tutorial. I'll check it out. I, I, at least right now, there's like this huge gap between, you know, the docs for tensorflow.js and like making a finished product. Um, if if he's doing an object detection, I'm gonna rage. <clears throat> Everybody's just doing the same thing. And they're just doing object detection, copying like one person's code basically. And it's getting annoying. So I just created this dope website with Wix. Did you? Let me show you how I did it. No. <laughs> you should play Clash of Clans. Too many games, man. I think you, you really need like one game in your life and that's it. Another session of my... I should get a whiteboard. I should do it just like this. This is many parts. This is, this is looking pretty good. I don't know why I've never heard of Coding Train. It's crazy how many people are on YouTube and like, you just never hear of them. Like this guy's like completely related Although, let me see what else he does. Maybe just does everything, not just like Python. Yeah, this is like programming. See, this guy's probably a legitimate programmer. That's, that's the difference. <laughs> you have the power user syntax, and then this guy's probably a legit programmer. You didn't answer. It's because I've answered the Linux question like a million times. Windows is better for users. And so if I'm doing things like recording or video editing or if I play a game or anything, <laughs> Linux is just not good at it. 
So I definitely, like I use Linux for all my servers, like all my websites and all that kind of stuff, but no, as a main computer, I think you really gotta use Windows or Mac, and that's about it. At what age did I start? I think it was 20, 20 or 21. Didn't read any books. I started with, actually, hey, that's a lie. I, re, I don't know if I could say uh, if I read a book if it was online. It was nltk.org slash book. That's how I learned Python, because I wanted to do natural language processing. Other than that, though, I haven't read any book, and I'm actually not even sure. nltk.org slash book? I'm not even sure there's an actual book. Like, I think they just called it a book. Um, project in the future? I'd like to continue the self-driving car in uh, Grand Theft Auto. Possibly do a first-person shooter, uh, like AI. Kind of the same idea, just reading off of game pixels. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um... Coding trained as a live streamer. I thought about doing something like that too, but God, I hate editing. <laughs> I just hate doing it. Like every time I do it, if I do a video and if I screw it up or whatever, I'll just re record it. <laughs> God, I can't be asked to do video editing. <laughs> I, I know nothing about programming neural nets in MATLAB. I mean, like I was saying before, if, if it gets the job done and whatever you're trying to do, if you can do it in MATLAB, awesome. If you can't or it's too slow or whatever, um, yeah. Yeah. Nikolai, yeah, Corey Schaefer. That's probably the only other channel I really know much about. Yeah, I, I, that's the one channel I recommend to everybody. So <laughs> I'm aware of Corey Schaefer. I was recommending Corey Schaefer from like f when he had like 15,000 subs, okay? I'm a Corey Schaefer OG, trust me. I think, I wish, I think, I wish Corey Schaefer would, uh, I don't know how frequently he uploads now, but uh, Corey Schaefer, let's see if I can find him. Let's put him up on YouTube. Let's see how frequently now he's uploading. But in the past, it was just way too slow. Like he could be a huge channel if he just, if he, if he was more active. And I, I don't know what his, you know, real life job is or anything. Uh, but he could definitely, uh, he could, he could go full time YouTube if he, if he wanted to take the jump. Why? Well, I definitely typed in Corey Schaefer and I landed on Corey Scherer. That's not what I wanted. I was like, dang, Corey Schaefer has 700,000 subs. Incredible. Preparing some new stuff for 2018. I don't my, my search bar on YouTube. Some I don't know if you guys can put links. I have no idea. Someone put a link to Corey Shaver's channel. It's like my search bar is just not working. can't put links. Uh, I would think you could link to a YouTube channel though. Let me just <laughs> I got his Twitter. This is this is the longest and the most effort I've ever had trying to pull up a I don't know why my I guess my internet's just going super slow. Thank you, Scott. It just isn't loading. I don't. It's just going unbelievably slow. Work from home would be better or full time in office? I mean, if you're working with other people, I feel like it's in your best interest to work like with them rather than for from home if you're trying to gain experience or learn about working with other people in teams and stuff like that i do feel like if you're working on it with a team it's better to be in person 
I can't load his channel. I don't know what the deal is. <laughs> this is so frustrating. It's just like stuck. Let me try another another browser or something. Let's see. Hey everybody, how's it going? There we go. No little incognito can't solve. Three weeks, three weeks, three weeks. And this is O's Flask series, yeah. Look at this data dump three weeks ago. My gosh. <clears throat> so does he usually just post like once a month or something maybe? It's kind of what it looks like. Maybe a chunk every once a month. Anyway, yeah, if you've never heard of his channel, check it out. Training the robot real time. Um, yeah, so my thought was, you know, you can figure out where the uh, data dump. I honestly don't know what to think about the YouTube. As long as the, the content that you put out, the biggest thing is just do people watch it all the way through. And as long as they're doing that, it's okay. But yeah, if you if you drop like five videos and then people watch like the first two minutes of one of those five videos and then none of the other five videos, uh, that's going to negatively impact you quite a bit. Do you think in the future there will be a thousand of machine learning job? No. I mean, maybe... Maybe in the really near future, a lot of ML jobs, and then uh, much of me thinks that uh, the role of the programmer is going to probably, that job is probably going to shrink. I just think programmers are going to program themselves out of a job. That's my guess. My goal is to just be on top of that and be the one that sells the product that that does that thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty confident that it, I, <clears throat> I'm not really sure it'll be AI, but like, for example, eventually I think we'll get to the point where like, you don't have like phone apps necessarily. You've got like one app where you tell the app, Hey, I'd like a weather app that notifies me when X, Y, Z happens. And I want you to show me this radius or whatever. And, and like, that's it. It's just, an, you just use natural language to get the app to do whatever it is that you want to do. That's the end game for all apps. <laughs> right? And then maybe you could like share those apps, like app recipes, and you would share them with friends or whatever. But I think eventually there's just going to be this massive vacuum that just, yeah, there just won't be that many jobs, I don't think. And that might take 20, 30 years, but eventually, yeah, I don't really have much faith in it. Except for like for hobbies or something like that. I think people will still always program. I really don't know. I mean, <clears throat> nobody can predict the future. So as far as, you know, choosing it as a career in the future, I think any career is at risk. I think the same thing, like my wife just, uh, became a doctor and she was thinking about going into surgery and I was like, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> like, I feel like surgery is a perfect example. I mean, we are, robots are already taking over surgery. Um, so eventually I think that's, that's a perfect example where, um, like people have quicker recovery times when, and they have like less pain after surgery. Um, and you, right now we need humans to like oversee the surgery. Uh, I forget what they call those bots, but we'll call them surgery bots. Um, so like right now you still need a surgeon to like oversee it and stuff, but eventually, I mean, I just, eh. and I think it'll be cheaper, all that kind of stuff. So I'm thinking of sending this to Y equals I wonder if we could just send it to, because that's a decimal. So we really should be able to just say puck y times. Uh, arm y max times two. Uh, 
and then divide it by or subtract arm y max the slowest update of this script ever <coughs> Programming would probably be the last job. Yeah, definitely. I mean, because pro you'll basically be programming a way. Like, I think the biggest job will be programming jobs. Uh, so, I mean, it's probably the most secure job, but yeah. Thank you for the donation, William. Or the super chat. I can't really tell. I guess it's super chat. Yeah. Yeah, can you imagine the 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 level of I don't know, not stress, I don't know, the the uh the pressure of writing the code for a robot that operates on people's hearts or brains. Woof. Same thing we were, I was I think the code for Apollo 11. Let's see Apollo 11. GitHub. That's up here on GitHub. You can look at that code. Can you imagine writing the code? <laughs> oh my gosh. Like the just the amount of pressure if it if you screw it up. Automate politics and national security. The problem with that <clears throat> is like all code has holes too. So I'm not really sure you'd want to automate politics and national security. Because whoever is the most, man, I can't clear my throat today. <clears throat> I probably shouldn't just be purely talking and drinking coffee. Thanks for the link, Scott. I, don't know. <laughs> I should have posted the link. Is it possible to address each individual joint? Yeah, yeah, you can you can access each like servo in the Swift robot. You can send in like G code and all that. Okay, so I think if we set this position to that Y, I think it should strike towards the puck. We're gonna see. I need to put the striker back in it too. didn't get there in time. It like closes the little gripper way too quickly. <laughs> I couldn't stick the striker in there. A Minecraft playing AI? What would it do? Like, what would it do in Minecraft? Let me pull this over for you guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> I feel like that went backwards before it actually took made the hit. I'm not sure what what I've done wrong here. I'm not sure that's exactly what I was hoping for. <laughs> Am I moving the hand manually? No. My hands. <laughs> <laughs> My puck. <laughs> I feel like it's moving backwards before it's striking. I'm not. Why would it be doing that? At least that one was pretty good. Sometimes it moves backwards, which is odd. And that was just the wrong direction. What is the robot doing right now? You tell me, man. 
<laughs> um, yeah. Now it's uh, I'm not sure what it's doing. It's it's rage quitting. I th I think. Get it. <laughs> I mean that did pretty much what I was asking, but sometimes it, that was weird. Sometimes it would like. Do we close that off? No. Do we? Mm, fix that. <laughs> you have to do it a little better than that. For Minecraft AI, you could possibly make it so it just fights mobs. Honestly, I've only seen like Minecraft videos. I've never played Minecraft. Controlled the power it puts in. You mean like how hard it hits or something like that? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, so just totally missed the bug. We've got something wrong with the math. Somebody needs to uh, help me solve this one. I'm not sure why. Because here we're getting the percentage out of double the max because we go into the negatives. Um, and then I remove the arm Y max, which is like, that's defined up here, which we've done. Like the maximum really for the arm is like 220 to negative 220. Mm. It seems like when it's out, when it's in the negatives, it's like striking the wrong way like I'm pretty sure when it's up towards the top that's a negative please play Fortnite with ML the problem with any of those like I want to do a first person shooter but Fortnite's too close to like something like PUBG or whatever where um, the distance to the person that you like you the, your ability to detect a player at a great distance is what is rewarded in something like, like Fortnite or PUBG or whatever. Um, and that's really hard to do with just image processing because you you'd have to take the image and go like do a slider over just tiny parts of that image. And then doing that at a, a high frame rate would be just super challenging. I'm not even, I, don't, I have no idea how you would get away with doing something like that. You'd probably get just way too small frames per second. And then if the person is moving or you're moving or whatever, that would be really j challenging. Why don't you train a virtual neural network? I don't know. Ask, uh, ask Scott. <laughs> if you mean for the, uh, for the air hockey. We have like a, a real basic uh, Unity version of like uh, playing air hockey and all that. Uh, the physics still need to be worked out. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite third person. I mean, you could you can filter out though the like if the person's always at like kind of like the same coordinates or whatever, you could definitely filter yourself out, but you could but like that was a problem with the GTA like when I made the uh basically like the the aimbot in Grand Theft Auto, that was kind of the problem with that was a lot of times it would detect itself, uh, which was annoying, to say the least. 
In this case, the IDE Sublime text says at the top. So puck zero. I'd have to go back and look. I wonder if we're, we are, I don't think we're flipping it though. Cause it goes, so puck zero should be all the way to the top of the screen for, uh, for the Y. So if, if Y is zero in OpenCV, that's all the way at the top of the screen. So I set 190 to the max because if we go 220 and the bot goes all the way to 220, like negative 220, it'll go beyond the edge and just like drop the puck. And that's obviously problematic. But yeah, so if, if the puck is at zero, the arm should be at negative, um, you know, 190. I think playing Fortnite with ML. Isn't it Fortnite Microsoft though? That would be a company that would uh, possibly appreciate ML playing it. I think eventually we, we have to we have to consider laws around artificial intelligence and uh, not allowing AIs to play a game or buy a product or whatever. I think that's problematic. Yeah, the, the stream should be uploaded automatically to YouTube. Let me look here. Obviously, when the puck goes into the corner, that's a problem, but uh, it shouldn't, it should still be able to strike at the puck correctly. It almost looked like when it was, when the puck was at the arm's negatives, it would strike in the wrong direction, which was a problem. Hello, doggy. So I have a dog that uh, knows how to open doors. Sometimes uh, he just decides he wants to go outside, so he just opens the door and goes outside. And he doesn't shut the door behind him. <laughs> Did you program it? The dog? No, that dog just learns how to do things on its own. Yeah, he'll watch you like open a door or a gate or something one time and uh and he'll figure it out from there. So that was pretty score. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then that one, was, I wonder if it's just a delay though, like if the puck is moving too quick, I think that's what's causing the problem, because that time it was uh, on the positive end. <laughs> uh, great, fantastic, I really appreciate that, that was pretty good though. One shot learning dog, yeah, whoa. Thanks, you arm. <laughs> yeah, what model's he running? He seems pretty good. Could you make the puck? The problem with that is we're having a serious problem getting the puck just to make it reach the other the other side, basically. At least with this code, uh, it's happening. So you really could at least get the model to train itself on some data. I feel like I hear the arm move. Can't decide. I feel like I hear the arm moving and it should be off.
Do 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 do. So here's why I'm not a programmer and why I'm a power user. Ready? Dun dun dun. <laughs> He's not grabbing the puck. He needs to be reset, I think. Why don't you use specific Python IDEs like PyCharm? I just like a nice simple editor. Again, what just like uh, what language to use or framework or whatever. Just use whatever gets the job done. I mean, if you're highly successful and uh, productive in PyCharm, use PyCharm. I feel like I'm going to have to, I'm not really sure if it's, uh, if it's like because the arm is lagging that it's missing the puck or what. I, I'm not really sure why that's happening sometimes because sometimes it hits the puck perfect and then sometimes it's, it like swings in the absolutely wrong direction. I think it's going, oh, it looked like it went over the puck. Do you work in C++? No. Woof. <laughs> the arm's really smashing stuff. I tried to learn C++. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a rage quit on the arm. Um, anyway, I tried to learn C++, but the problem is uh, it's just super frustrating when you're like trying to make a project in C++ how long it takes. Uh, and then you're like doing the math constantly in your head how quickly you could just do it in Python. And then I just go do it in Python. So, <laughs> just too tedious. <laughs> yeah, he's. I'm done with this game. I think I'm going to actually comment this and this out. That way we're not making that request to the arm. One last request is fine. Yeah, the code is on GitHub. Uh, just slash syntax slash uarm, and then here's a direct link to the to the code that's running like right now. OpenCV works great with C plus plus. It works great with Python too, though. In your opinion, will AI develop an intelligent on their own? Um, I feel like with AI, everything's inevitable, right? Like on a long enough timeline, will can AI develop like an AI? Uh, yeah, I think the only thing that is questionable to me is whether whether an intelligence can create an intelligence that's more intelligent than itself. And that's the that's like the fundamental thing I have with. Uh, with you know the singularity and all that is just like we have no reason to believe that an intelligence could create an intelligence that's more intelligent so until we have evidence of that i don't think you could could go for it where's my drink of choice water <laughs> unless you mean alcoholic beverages or something but uh water coffee <laughs> <Cofefe. laughs> yeah. iced black coffee You don't need six question marks, man. Hey, maybe it's a serious question.
Yeah, right. So, like, if a human could create an intelligence smarter than itself, then that would be evidence that an intelligence could do such a thing. And then with, like, an intelligence that's software-based, you just, you make lots of copies. So if, like, 5,000 copies of an AI could make a single AI more intelligent than any one of the copies of AI that, you know, put it together, then um, then you'd have, then you could see a scenario like a singularity. But again, even to have something like the singularity, like an intelligence explosion take place, you'd you'd need to have the processing power, and unless we can also simultaneously like use the intelligence to figure out how to more efficiently do the processing or something like that, just don't see it happening. But on a long enough timeline, I feel like uh, at least AI making another intelligence, that's really no different than what we've done as humans, right? Like we've made intelligences um, like AI. So of definitely AI could write another intelligence, but would it be smarter? I'm not sure. Did someone actually ask my opinion on Iran? <laughs> That's a great question. Yeah. What do you think about Iran in the USA? Yeah. Who cares what I think on that? <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I with uh, playing CSGO... Uh, with a neural network, um, probably it would probably be more likely uh, object detection based. I'd like to definitely check out the you only look once and compare that to the Coco model that I've done. Um, but I wouldn't mind it, especially like with CSGO, you can play indoors. So that kind of negates the problem that we were talking about earlier with like playing like Fortnite or PUBG. Uh, both of those you have to... you. Your biggest task in those games is like determining is something a bush or a player or a you know a tree or a player or something like that. That's a very challenging task to do with uh, image recognition because you're going to be you just would have a hard time getting a good frame rate. But if you could play like in a in a building or something like that, uh, you could make a pretty darn good AI. I think a very challenging one, anyways. So, Christoph. I I wouldn't even say AI is more intelligent at specific tasks. Uh, I would say AI is more like efficient or something like that at specific tasks. But, um, you know, like a computer is more efficient at doing mathematics than a human. But are they more intelligent? I, I think you'd, you'd be hard pressed. But you also have to define what you, what you mean by intelligence, I suppose. My puck. TPUs. I've never been able... I haven't used one, so I really can't answer that. I applied to get access to one because I was curious how they would how they would be, but I couldn't get it. <laughs> if that, get that out of the corner. Oh my gosh. I was really hoping it would solve this. You can you can get a TPU on Google Cloud. A lot of times any of those like high processing power things you still have to like apply for. Why doesn't it move backwards and then horizontally? Because um, the code doesn't exist for that. If you want, uh, make a pull request. <laughs> make it happen, man. A poker playing AI.
does it have to play with like physical cards? Why didn't you accept my pull request to NMT? I haven't looked at the NMT, NMT chatbot in GitHub in a while. Also, that's uh, Daniel's. You should ask Daniel why he didn't accept it. Am I using Titan X? No. I've had not good success with the Titan cards. Both the Titan X and Titan X Pascal both kind of burned out on me. That was from the, uh, the GTA series. Both of them are actually in boxes. I, I don't know if you can see the box behind me. Can you? I don't think you can. Anyway, they're in boxes right now. They just, they crash a lot. kind of just want to like tape these pieces of cardboard in the corners <laughs> to stop it going in there. <laughs> Did you go to college? Yeah, I went to college. I uh, double majored criminal justice and philosophy. Sell them to minors. They crash. I don't, I think uh, people would be irritated. Autonomous flying with the quadcopters? No, I haven't. I'd really like to. I think that would be a lot of fun. I have like the stuff with the Raspberry Pi, but the problem is the Raspberry Pi just can't calculate quick enough. And uh, I think it's called like a Navio, N-A-V-I-O. Yeah, Navio 2. It's like a hat that sits on top of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, and that's supposed to be pretty good for for controlling quadcopters. I've just never never tried it out. I think at one point I tried to get them to send me one. I can't remember what, what the result of that was. I don't know anything about the GTX 1100 series. Honestly, I always, my opinion is always based on performance to price. So, um, like the Titan V, for example... It's just way overpriced for what it is. So, I mean, if they keep releasing way overpriced cards, I'm not impressed. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. So I really think I'm going to just tape these little pieces of cardboard in the corner. I'm worried that it's going to just hit the hit the striker though and like drop it. What's my approach to getting started with something new? Um, just start trying to solve whatever the problem is that you're trying to do. It really just, I guess it kind of depends on what you're talking about, but break it down into a ton of tiny steps. Centex, are you ignoring? <laughs> Literally just responded. Cardboard away, see what happens. Yeah. I just feel like if it was angled like that, it'd be less likely, but then it'll still get stuck like behind the arm, but seems way more common that it guides it into a corner than anything else. Don't do it again. When are you going to do audio processing with ML? I'm not sure. I'd like to do, I'll probably do tensorflow.js before I do any audio processing. So probably sometime after that. I don't know how to do audio processing, to be honest. It's all, I'm, I'm just going to be winging it, so. <laughs> you may or may not want to see it.
<laughs> how would you go about video summarization? I think that's a Kaggle challenge that's going on right now. More speed. The problem with the arm speed, you can get it to go quicker, but uh, it starts getting like real jittery. We can we can up the speed a little bit and see what happens, but a lot of times it starts going kind of crazy. Dunn's hat. Uh, what you doing there, man? I think he's pressing too hard. I'm going to reset him. I think he's gone down. Uh, every time he makes a swing, I'm, I'm lowering it just ever so slightly. And uh, I think that's causing trouble. I feel like I have changed nothing. I wonder if the lighting is causing trouble or something because he keeps detecting over here. I think it's I think it's probably because it got a little brighter or something. Like uh, the sun's come up. Uh, let's see. So first, let's turn off autofocus while we're here. No, sir. Let's save it there. <laughs> you think I should make lighting better? Yeah. What time is it? 10.30 a.m. Score. It's not too bad when you cheat with uh, some pieces of cardboard. <laughs> that seems to be working. What time do I rise? Kind of varies. Somewhere between 6 and 7 usually.
what algorithm is it using? Um, follow the puck and then hit the puck. <laughs> That's about it. Is that the maximum force? No, the arm can definitely hit a little harder, but it's like this super balancing act between not, not like, you know, I don't think you're really overheating the arm, but the little motors get kind of pissy. <laughs> Do you ever get tired standing at your desk? No, not really. I have, the only thing is like your feet. Um, as long as you have like a little foot mat or something and you don't stand in your shoes, then it's good. So if you have one at work or something and you have to stand in shoes, I think my feet would get tired, but I'm allowed to be barefoot. Favorite YouTube channels? Hmm. Really just like car channels, to be honest. Uh, I don't really watch like programming or anything like that. Except for like when I'm trying to learn something, but there's never really like one source. Get it. Cool. So maybe now we can try to speed up the arm a little bit and see what we can get away with. So I changed, I think part of the problem too is just issuing these commands to the arm consistently. So, I mean, I can add this back. I think the top speed up here was 700. So one of the issues that I, I like these commands right here, timeout, so the camp sending the commands. Um, so that was one issue I've seen. So like we, I, ideally to hit the puck as hard as possible, we'd want to have it as fast like this, but you know, raising um basically like raising up the acceleration so this is just the acceleration command so the motors like kind of slowly get up to speed um but if we raise them up real fast like this it'll go like it'll hit really hard and then but then you want to set the speed back down because you don't want to always be at 5000 because the arm gets real finicky um but these commands were timing out on me before so i don't really think this is going to be a solution but we can we can try it real quick just to see if it'll how that'll do. I have no idea. Where did the puck go? Is the puck on the board? Is he like under the arm? I don't even see it. Yeah, it is. <laughs> See, it hits it so much harder. Oh, went over it. No. Uh, okay, so I kind of want to just fix the striker and see if it'll get itself out of this scenario. It looks like it did. <laughs> See, now it's kind of, yeah, it does, like, it'll start freaking out like that. <laughs> Man, this thing is scoring all the time now. Uh oh, my little concrete barriers aren't doing so well. <laughs> He's hitting it pretty successfully right now, though. Whoa. What's going on with that servo? What the heck? 
I really don't know why he switched his servo around. That's he shouldn't have done that. Do you remember its first goal? Um, no, I don't remember which one was its first goal. I feel like yesterday was probably its first goal because for a while it couldn't even hit the puck hard enough to get to the goal. Almost. Hard coded right now. So the idea is to just hard code it, just to get it to the point where um, where it can score at least once in a while, and then you could take. Dang, that's some hard hitting. <laughs> and then you could take it to the point where it. Uh, you could take the the training data where it scores well, and then and use that to train a neural network, and then again, just kind of let it uh, explore random parameters, and then continue training on just every time the model gets better. I don't know, it just kind of froze there. Anyway, once it does start scoring, you can take all the scoring plays, basically, and use that as training data. See if you can figure out how to get out of this. Order a second arm and have a 1v1. Or everybody should just tweet at Factory and tell them to send me a second arm. <laughs> I'll be right back. So this seems to be playing pretty good. I don't know if it actually froze in my absence or not, but it uh, seems pretty good. Score. It did get stuck in the corner, I think, when I came back, though. Camera for this. Uh, it's a C920s uh, hanging over the board. Make a robot. I really would love to make a robot that could make another robot. Like, th like a 3D print. Like this has a little 3D printing attachment. That'd be so cool <laughs> to just 3D print like another bot that could 3D print another bot. That would be pretty cool. But how would you do like the motors and all that? It's pretty much impossible. Yeah, I'm pretty sure with this, this bot alone, there's another score. With this bot alone, we could definitely um, we could create a pretty decent training set for data. Oh no! <laughs> you can do it, man. Nice. <laughs> you got kind of angry there for a minute, but he figured it out.
Do you think it's possible to reproduce Pi GTA on PS4 or Xbox One? I can't imagine how. That sounds really challenging. And for what? <laughs> I'm not sure it'd be worth going through all that effort. What neural network am I going to use? The one that works. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. It's pretty hard to know like what you're going to do out of the gate. You, you just trial and error. Anybody that knows exactly what model to use right away is probably lying about it. Or they just got lucky. Who are you working for? Myself. <laughs> Code for a goalkeeper. Yeah. Actually, that'd be kind of interesting. Like adversarial networks. One is a goalkeeper. The other one just tries to score on the goalkeeper. It'd be kind of interesting. How do you determine the learning rate? Uh, loss rate, basically. <laughs> Am I working for the NSA? No. I left the NSA. <laughs> Not really on the greatest terms. <laughs> Let's start a hockey puck business. Wouldn't your training be a lot faster with two arms? Yeah, definitely. Just need two arms. <laughs> Being head confirmed. Ooh, this one's going to be a challenge. I don't think he's going to get this out of here. Make the second arm. Whoa, he's getting angry. Okay, so that actually worked pretty well. Um, I am pretty curious. What if. Yeah, can you guys not hear the arm? It, it makes a lot of noise. <laughs> Just when he gets like angry though. Yeah, that speed is definitely too fast. This is gonna keep timing out. Whew. Is it too loud? Well, it's in a different room. I wouldn't hear it in my room if I slept. I would not trust the uh, the arm to hold my coffee for me. Have I been to Europe? Uh, the only country I've been to in Europe is Italy. I went there for my honeymoon. So I can't really uh, say any country in Europe is my favorite. Why don't I ignore your questions? 
<laughs> Message retracted. Who doesn't decorate their wall with quadcopters? Okay, so what's the arm doing right now? Like, what's he thinking about? Where do I live? Alabama now. Oh my gosh, she destroyed the... Uh... <laughs> I really carefully engineered those barriers. I don't know how they got destroyed. <laughs> no, I've never been to India. There was like some conference in India that tried to get me to go. Problem with conferences is they always want you to just go for free. <laughs> so somehow you're supposed to go to the conference and pay for food, travel, hotel. And then you talk for free at their conference, which they sell tickets to. And have sponsors. It just doesn't make any sense. It's too expensive to nice. Yeah, so, so predicting it's like the puck's position, I think would be the next thing. So you could easily take the puck and uh, just like take the motion from frame to frame. And then you could just, you know, draw a line basically from that point. Um, so you would know like where the puck's going to go. And then if it's about to hit one of the edges, just have it refractor off the edge. Um, I don't know what math you would use for that, but <laughs> that's how you would do it. I definitely like went, I didn't even touch it. I don't know if you'll be able to tell that. <laughs> as soon as I go over there, the arm fixed itself. I don't know if it detected the puck elsewhere because of a shadow or what. That was interesting. Is this a neural network? No, not yet. Now, first you want, like first you take a rule based or you could play it as a human. But you got to make the training data before you could do much else. Now, probably the next thing is one is just doing trajectory because you would definitely, at least to strike the puck, you'd want to know the puck's trajectory and then know which way you should have to. Why does it keep getting stuck there? You would need to know which way you should strike the puck for a trajectory that would line up with wherever the goal is. Now, if I go over there and he fixes himself, I'm going to be pretty angry. What the heck? Is it the shadow? I, I can't see what's going on. Next time I go over there, I'm going to look. But I just like walk over and he's like, okay, okay, I'll fix it. Yeah, but so I think it's the shadow, but is it detecting? Are you guys seeing it detects a puck somewhere else when I go over there? Okay. Now pay attention. Although, I really think it's actually frozen, but I'm not sure right now, no? Yeah, the shadow definitely blocks it, but why did it fix itself? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it definitely started to de detect a puck like up here, so it just like took a swing. What's that, Daniel? Losing track? If you mean freezing, it definitely hasn't frozen like it did before at all. And I'm actually running pretty significant speeds, especially on the strike. Like a lot of times, although now it's kind of frozen, but the puck is stuck. A lot of times, I think if it doesn't detect the puck, it doesn't show up here, I think is the issue. Or actually, that was a timeout. This is just a straight up timeout there for some reason. And that seems to happen over here for whatever reason. I'm not really sure why. Yeah, all, all uh, 
basically like all conference speakers do it for the like publicity. So a lot of times if, if you work for like a company or something like that, the company will fund you going there. Um, but like for someone like me, why would I go to a conference to speak for free? It's just because then it's just work. I'd rather just pay to go to the conference. I'm not going to the conference in India. That's what that's the whole problem. Is it's just too expensive to get there. <laughs> the arm has moved itself. You should try Factorio on stream. I think Daniel plays Factorio, but uh, I don't know anything about Factorio. Someone tell me what Factorio is. Don't do it, it'll eat your life. <laughs> no, me and Daniel have never met in real life. <laughs> so I'm still very confused at what's going on in Factoria. This game is cracked. Uh, I should probably stay away from this game then. It's just automation. None of YouTube video. Yeah, the video didn't really seem to explain to me what, what Factorio is. Gonna be honest. Why do you use Chrome in incognito mode? So default usernames and passwords or whatever are not filled in for everybody on stream. Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, if you use an incognito, the man can't track you at all. So that's that's really the reason I'm using it. Why does it want to get stuck in exactly that location? That's a good block. <laughs> He's legit. No, I'm illegit Snowden. Wow. He's just going too crazy. I think it's pressing down too hard at this point. Yeah, I think uh, I think it was pressing down too hard, uh, and that's why it wasn't going all the way to the corner. I'm not really sure. I still can't figure out. So like over time, the arm presses, the arm like wants to raise on that Z axis really, really slowly, 
Um, so I have it every time it makes a strike lowers on the z-axis really really slowly but that that seems to be still too fast see you later score I mean, I'm sure... Oh, you think it's getting stuck in the corner because of the shadow? It's possible. You could put a light over it or something. How many hours on average does it take to become good at building neural networks? I don't know, man. I guess it depends on where you started with. And what you'd mean by good. Really, building neural networks is just kind of trial and error. Got froze that time. How many years does it take? I don't think it takes years. I mean, obviously, if you're starting as not a programmer. Yeah, it's possible we could improve um, using like straight G code, but I'm not really sure. And now things are freezing for some reason. Like that freezing wasn't happening earlier. I don't know if the arm is just uh, getting warm or what. Ooh. <laughs> Got it. Uh. Get it. <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm getting hungry. I think I'm going to go eat. Arm's looking much better. Someone has some trajectory code or something, or uh, something they want to improve with the, uh, with the script, you can submit it here. The current code that I used here was in, uh, or today was air hockey stream code. So if you got some ideas for improvement, let me know. Is it only one thread? Yeah, it's on one thread right now. All right. Till next time.